Hello my friends, today we are going to discuss about our new chapter based on thermoelectric nano generators and the electromagnetic generators. So basically we are going to discuss about the two parts, one is based on the temperature that is the thermoelectric nano generators, another one is about the magnetic force, so that is why it is electromagnetic generators. So we are going to discuss both the mechanism in this particular lecture. So, if you remember in my last lecture, we have also discussed about that pyroelectric nano generators. So, basically the difference between the thermoelectric and the pyroelectric nano generators is that pyro basically it depends upon the temperature with time and in the thermo basically we are measuring the efficiency in terms of space means area. So, that is temperature in terms of area. So, that is only the basic difference in between the pyroelectric and the thermoelectric. So, in this particular case also the same thing whatever the waste energy we are getting from different sources. So, basically we are collecting those sources and then we are converting that particular heat energy into the electric energy. So, either it can be some kind of combustible uh, gases or maybe it can be from the uh, sunlight. So, whatever the sunlight we are not using then that type of energy or maybe our body temperature also. So, that temperature basically we are collecting and then we are converting into the electricity. So, basically nowadays you can see that lots of energy basically we are wasting because in the winter time when we are heating the water. So, basically that time the water is highly heated up or maybe we are flowing some kind of heat source like in terms of maybe hot air or maybe some kind of hot gas or maybe hot fluid throughout the pipe. So, due to that uh, some heat is coming outside the pipe itself. So, if we are able to collect those kind of heat energy and be able to convert those heat energy into the electrical energy because that is the wastage th of the thermal energy. So, basically the waste thermal energy is one of the largest source of inexpensive clean and fuel free energy available. Yes, of course, because we are not going to generate or maybe burning any kind of materials or maybe we are not generating any kind of toxic gases or maybe it is not harmful to the environment or maybe the human being. So, thermoelectricity is a promising technology in the direct conversion that is waste heat energy into electrical power. Thermoelectricity refers to a class of phenomena in which a temperature difference creates an electrical potential or maybe the vice versa. At atomic scale, an applied temperature gradient causes charge carriers in the material to diffuse from the hot side to the cold side thus inducing a thermal current. So, as I told already, so when we are transferring the heat source from one place to another, so due to the transferring of the heat source basically if we are able to collect that transfer mechanism, so we can convert it in into the electrical energy. Thermoelectric power generator is a device that converts heat energy into electrical energy based on the principle of Seebeck effect. So, that is the name of the scientist who has invented this particular technology that is why it is known as the Seebeck effect. I will come into the detail into the subsequent slide that what is the Seebeck effect. So, basically if we talk about the history, we can see that in the year of 1821, Thomas Seebeck, which I was talking about, from his name only that Seebeck effect has come. So, who discovered the Seebeck effect? Then 1834, Jean Peltier, who is also the famous scientist that time, who discovered the Peltier effect, basically that is also the heat transfer mechanisms. So, that he has effect, uh, invented the Peltier effect by which basically we this device is working. Next we came through 1949, then 1970, then 1977, 1993 and at last now we are standing over here that is the 2014. Till now also so many development has done in terms of some ma new material fabrications which can give you the better efficiency in terms of energy. So, this is invented by the alphabet energy systems introduced the E1 the first ever thermoelectric generator for industrial waste heat recovery and the most powerful thermoelectric generator ever built. So, now you can understand that from industry huge suppose if it is a thermal based industry or maybe chemical based industry due to some chemical reactions or maybe uh, thermal power plant a huge energy is generating. So, we are not 
utilizing that 100 percent of that particular energy, some energy we are wasting. So, if we are able to catch that particular waste energy and if we are able to convert that particular energy into the electricity, so that will be the added advantage. So, what is thermoelectric power generation? So, in a thermoelectric material there are free carriers which carry both charge and the heat. The device consists of a thermocouple comprising a P type and a N type material connected electrically in series and thermally in parallel. So, now in that particular case you can see that it is connected in a series connections that N type material and the P type material, but thermally they are the parallel one. So, now heat is applied into one side of the couple and rejected from the opposite side. So, now in this particular case basically we are giving the temperature. So, T plus del T means T was the initial temperature and whatever the change in temperature that is the del T. So, T plus del T now we are getting the temperature in this particular region. So, an electrical current is produced proportional to the temperature gradient between the hot and cold junction. Nanomaterials with higher performance are more attractive than their bulk counterparts for use in such thermoelectric devices since phonon scattering and energy dependent scattering of electrical carriers occur in the presence of nanoscale interfaces. So, what happened actually? So, when we are using this kind of nanomaterials, when we are passing the temperature to that nanomaterials, so it is generating the electricity. So, the material is having that particular capacity. So, now what are the working principle? Thermoelectric effect is defined as the direct conversion of temperature difference to electric voltage and vice versa as I told already. So, whatever will be the temperature difference, the same temperature difference in terms of electricity we are going to get as an output. So, the term thermoelectric effect encompasses three separately identified effects. One is called the Seebeck effect, then Peltier effect and last one is the Thomson effect. Now, what is Seebeck effect? So, it is named after German Estonian physicist Thomas Johann Seebeck as I told already. So, from his name only the effect or maybe he has invented this particular technology that is why it is known as the Seebeck effect. So, it is a phenomenon in which a temperature difference between two dissimilar electrical conductors or semiconductors produce a voltage difference between the two substances. So, basically in this particular case this T 1 and T 2 the materials are different, they are not electrically same. So, when we are giving the heat, so that material is changing and then they are generating the electricity. So, the voltage V developed can be derived by using the following equations which is nothing but capital V is equal to integral T 1 to T 2 S A T minus S B T D T where S A and S B are Seebeck coefficients of material A and B which we can get from the material properties as a function of temperature respectively. T 1 and T 2 are the temperatures of the two junction. So, as I told already these materials temperatures are different and materials are also different. So, now when we are hitting those materials both the materials behaves differently. Now, due to that they are producing the electrical current inside the circuit and through that circuit just we are taking it out the as a output. Next one is called the Peltier effect. Peltier effect describes that the thermoelectric material can convert electrical energy into a thermal gradient. So, sometimes it is little bit the vice versa one. In the earlier case we were giving the temperature it is converting into the electricity. In this particular case we are giving the electricity it is giving you the temperature or maybe the heat. When a current flows through a junction composed of different materials A and B, heat is generated at the upper junction at T 2 and absorbed at the lower junction at T 1. So, in this particular case what is happening? Heat flow is taking place because this material is totally cooled one because we have kept the ice over there and the bottom part it is rejecting the heat over there. So, heat flow basically it is coming from the top to the bottom. So, the Peltier heat Q prime absorbed by the lower junction per unit time is equal to Q prime is equal to pi b minus pi a into i, where pi b and pi a are the Peltier coefficient of material a and b, 
I is the electric current from A to B. Whenever current passes through the circuit of two dissimilar conductors, depending on the current direction, either heat is absorbed or released at the junction of the two conductors. So, if I am having two wear and if I give the temperature, so at the junction either one material will absorb or maybe one material will release the heat. So, just there will be a heat difference in between the two conductors and through that we can utilize it and we can generate the electricity. Now, the third one is called the Thomson effect. So, any current carrying conductor except for a superconductor with a temperature difference between two points either absorbs or emits heat depending on the properties of the materials. If a current density J is passed through a homogeneous conductor, the heat production Q per unit volume is given by Q is equal to rho J square minus mu J dt by dx, where rho is nothing but the resistivity of the materials, dt by dx is the temperature gradient along the wear. So, basically mu is the Thomson coefficient. So, basically what is happening? I am having one materials and when top of that materials when I am passing the current conductor, so automatically the temperature difference will be there or maybe the vice versa things also what we have seen into the Seebach effect. So, now what are the criteria of thermoelectric materials for high efficiency? First one is known as the figure of merit. The performance of the thermoelectric devices depends on the figure of merit of the material which is given by capital Z capital T is equal to alpha square by rho lambda into capital T, where capital T is nothing but the T2 plus T1 by 2, where alpha is the Seebach coefficient, rho is the electrical resistivity, lambda is equal to thermal conductivity and capital T is the temperature. So, capital ZT values in the 3, 4 range are essential till today the reported values are in the range of 2 to 3. So, basically now scientist has reached up to 2 to 3, our aim is to reach up to 3 to 4. So, this is the basically how it has been progressed with different materials. Now, we can see now we are standing almost here. So, basically now people are using this that indium and antimony combinations people are using these materials that means CUTAC selenium, copper selenium materials or maybe sometimes people are trying to make more other type of combinations so that they can reach to 3 to 4. Next second one is known as the device efficiency. So, the efficiency of a thermoelectric device for electricity generation is given by eta defined as eta is equal to energy provided to the load by heat energy absorbed at the hot junction. The maximum efficiency eta max is defined as by this particular equations, where this T h and T c are the temperature at the hot and cold junctions respectively and Z t is the modified dimensionless figure of merit. Therefore, the key to the application of thermoelectric materials is to increase their figure of merit. That means, we are going to increase the more value. Now, let us discuss about that what are the materials means on which properties basically we can choose the materials for the thermoelectric nano generators. It does not mean that any materials I will make and it can work as a thermoelectric nano generators. It should have certain criteria. What are those? The material should have high Seebach coefficient, low electrical resistivity and low thermal conductivity. So, these are three are the prime considerations for choosing any kind of thermoelectric nano generators. So, let us give some examples that what type of materials nowadays we are using. So, if we talk about the single phase materials, so now you can see this is the list for the single phase materials like beta Zn4 SB3 or maybe Fe SB2. So, these all are the different materials. If we talk about the anisotropic calcogenides compounds, so basically it is a combination of different materials. So, you can see some Bi2 Te3 or maybe CSBi4 Te6. So, it is a composition of the cesmium, bismuth and the tellurium. So, these kind of materials. If I talk about the isotropic calcogenide compounds, 
like lead tellurium combinations or maybe silver then antimony and tellurium compounds or maybe some others. If we talk about the oxide thermoelectric materials, it is p type thermoelectric oxides having combinations of the calcium, cobalt and the oxygen or maybe the n type thermoelectric oxides having the combination of calcium, manganese, oxygen. So, now it is the same thing I am telling you that we have to choose the materials or maybe we have to prepare the materials in such a manner that will satisfy these all properties and it will increase you the efficiency. Now, what is the thermoelectric effect for waste energy harvesting? Two main applications can be expected by using the thermoelectric effect. One is called the Seaback effect thermoelectric generator, another one is called the Peltier effect thermoelectric cooling. Two types of commercially available multicouple thermoelectric devices are available. One is type A, another one is type B. So, what is type A? So, type A is designed for cooling applications with large interthermo element separation and type B is for power generation with much dense structure and very small interthermo element separation to increase the power density of the device. So, when we are talking about the type A materials, so basically we are one materials we are giving the heating, one material we are giving the cooling and then due to that the charge is transferring. But when we are talking about the type B, so basically we are using the N type materials and P type materials simultaneously and then we are having some aluminum conducting strip from the both the sides and in between the N and P you are having that insulating materials and that can be generated for a large electric compositions or maybe the large power generations. Now, let us discuss about the thermoelectric nano generators or maybe in short basically we are calling it as a TIGS. Thermoelectric nano generators are a kind of thermoelectric device that means the Seaback effect, Peltier effect or maybe that Thomson effect. So, basically these effects or maybe these mechanisms we are using for the materials and we are generating the electricity. So, they are based on Te nanomaterials that means thermoelectric nanomaterials and can realize direct conversion between the thermal and electrical energy. According to the deformability, TEGS can be divided into two categories including rigid and flexible TEGS. They are mainly used in fields of power generation, heating and refrigeration, temperature sensing, etc. So, these all are the examples you can see that Zhang et al. So, they are working on this kind of materials and recently they have published this particular journal paper See, they and they have worked on the flexible tags also. So, that means that you can wear it or maybe you can put it anywhere and you can generate the electricity. Next nanostructure thermoelectric materials. So, when we are making a materials into the nanometer range. So, basically, so that is also the heterogeneous nanocomposites. Now, we can understand by seeing this particular material structure, lots of materials we are adding each together. So, that means it is a combination of materials just to get the more efficiency. Nanostructured lead tellurium people are using or maybe they are using the lead tellurium lead sulfur combinations. So, it is a different types of compositions basically they are using. If we talk about the super lattice nanostructures, basically lead tellurium super lattice materials or maybe oxide super lattice materials people are using. If we talk about the other kind of materials, so basically polycrystalline nanocomposites, then bismuth nanoware, then silicon nanoware people are working onto it and they are trying to use it for thermoelectric nano generator. Now, what is the advantages? So, no moving parts. So, it is noise and vibration free. Simply you are having that materials and now you are applying the temperature onto that and it is generating the electricity. So, it is a very small device. You can easily carry from one place to another place. It is lightweight. Cost wise it is also very cheap and not only that it does not have a very rugged that you need some kind of transport mechanisms to take it from one place to another. Volume is also very small. They exhibit very high reliability that is the important parameters and they are scalable and no position dependent. So, anywhere you can put it over there. Of course, these nano generators are having certain kind of disadvantages. So, basically low energy conversion efficiency rate. So, that is why the people are working on 
compositions of the different materials to increase its efficiency. Slow technology progressions, high cost requires relatively constant heat source. High cost in terms of when we are going to use some kind of rare earth materials or maybe some kind of advanced materials, that time it is costly. But when it will come into the market and we will go for the bulk production, from the research point of view it is high cost. But if it will come into the market and automatically we are going for the bulk production, so automatically the cost will be reduced. What are the applications? So, basically you can see in that cup of tea or maybe cup of coffee, if I am having that particular flexible sensor and I can put it, because what when I am pouring the tea or coffee inside the cup, so outside it is heated up. And we never thought that we can use that particular heat energy to generate the electricity. So, that is the beauty of this particular technology. Cell power temperature sensor, body powered wireless pulse oximeter. So, these all are the technology basically we are taking the heat from our body parts and then we are measuring our own oxygen content inside our body or maybe that percentage of oxygen presence inside our body. Health monitoring powering small devices, self powered strain sensors. So, these all are the examples where we can use this particular technology. Now, we have come to the second part of this particular lecture, which is nothing but about the electromagnetic generators. So, it is a vibration energy can be harvested from ambient micro vibrations from body activities and from mechanical equipment. The vibration energy harvesting systems are electrostatic, electromagnetic, piezoelectric, triboelectric and so on. Electromagnetic harvesting systems have lower production cost and the longer lifetime. Electromagnetic methods include linear generators and rotary generators. In a rotary type generator, linear vibration motion is converted into rotary motion using screws, chains or gears. So, simple what happened? Either I am giving the electricity to that mat particular materials so that it can generate some kind of magnetic or maybe electromagnetic field. Due to that, maybe some motions or vibrations is creating or maybe the vice versa ones also. If the material is having that capability, if I give certain kind of motion or vibration to that particular materials, it can generate the electricity. So, in this particular case what happened? In the shaft, best example in the fan. So, we are using that magnet. So, basically the when the magnet is rotating, so in, in this particular case we are giving the electricity and the magnet is rotating. If I do the opposite thing also, if I rotate the magnet and due to that the electricity can be generated. So, this is the basically principle of this particular technology. Now, if we talk about the linear magnetic generator, it consists of an armature, stator and case as shown in that particular image. So, this is basically the case, I am having that coil. So, as I told already, I am using the permanent magnet over there. Now, the armature consists of a permanent magnet core and the shaft while the stator concerns the electromagnetic coils. So, this is basically the armature unit over there. And then a neodymium ferrite NDFE magnet is used for the permanent magnet. So, in this particular case you can see we are using the permanent magnet. Non-magnetic stainless steel is used for the shaft and steel 1010 is used for the core. Tension and compression springs were used to apply the resonance phenomenon to the armature itself. So, now in this particular case due to that magnetic field what is happening? This material is moving inside the whole case systems. Now, what is the working principle of electromagnetic generators? Basically, the electromagnetic generators work on the principle of electromagnetic induction which is Faraday's law of induction. Faraday's law of induction states that the electromotive force around a closed path or loop is equal to the negative to the time rate of change of the magnetic flask enclosed by that particular path. So, what is EMF is nothing but the minus d psi by d t, where EMF is in volts. So, this unit is in volts, psi is the magnetic flux computed as though the coil in a one turn coil that is in Weber. Induced EMF depends on magnetic property, spring mass property, coil property and the power processing property you see. So, I am having that coil. So, when I am moving that particular magnet inside this particular tube, so what is happening? The electricity is generating, the volt is forming that is which is nothing but this EMF which is based on the Faraday's law of 
induction. Now, it depends upon the magnetic property. Magnetic flux density is a significant parameter in designing micro generator. Rare earth magnets produce a strong flux density and suitable for these particular applications. Neodymium iron boron magnets is known as most powerful magnetic properties per cubic centimeter and able to operate at up to 140 degree centigrade. Now, we can understand at the time of operations if little bit temperature will rise also that it can sustain up to 140 degree centigrade. Samarium cobalt a rare earth magnet with less powerful and less expensive compared to neodymium iron boron can be used if higher temperature operations is required at it was working temperature up to 300 degree centigrade. Now, when I am giving the current, so what happened? The magnetic force is generating and due to that just it is catching all the gems clip over there. And if I stop this particular circuit, so automatically the electromagnetic force will go and it will not attract any metal. Next one is called the spring mass property. So, basically the spring mass system is referred as the system that provides the oscillations for the magnet in order to achieve flux cutting mechanism and induce certain EMF. Spiral shape spring with lower spring constant and lower stress concentration produce larger displacement when oscillate thus maximize flux cutting rate and induce the higher EMF. So, in this particular case what happened? So, spiral says spring with lower spring constant. So, here we are using the spring over there. So, produce the larger displacement when oscillate thus maximize the flux cutting rate and induce the higher EMF. This spring is suitable for low frequency power generator cantilever or paddle or beam springs are also preferred using used in modeling micro generator by the researcher itself. So, in this particular case what happened? If the spring constant of this particular spring is higher so, that may automatically this mass will not free flow. So, it will become more stiff, but if the spring is having the low spring constant, so that time the mass will move in a very high range. So, basically that principles we are using over here. Next one is called the coil property. So, basically the copper wire or coils are widely reported as induction coil used in micro generator either where wound copper coil or electro deposited copper coil is used to report a micro generator device. Sometimes we are doing certain kind of coating onto the copper coil also. Wear wound copper coil is normally applied to the macro size prototype micro generator while electro deposited copper coil is used for smaller size micro generator device. Besides gold has also been used as coil material in fabrication process, but that is for the high end equipment purpose because it is too costly. Copper metal as coil material is more commonly used than gold as the copper has better conductivity and more cost effective. So, that is why uh, people are using more copper wire than the gold wire. Next power processing circuit, the power generated from ambient vibration is going to be a time varying voltage. This vibration source may not be reliable or periodic as the ambient vibrations is non-deterministic. So, in this particular case what happened? So, I am giving the potential difference in this particular case. So, when I am attaching these two then only the electricity is going to that particular load itself. So, the generated voltage must be regulated to a certain level in order to maintain a specified performance level before it can be used to a power load circuit. So, now from here I can control the load or maybe that voltage. A very low power DC DC switching converter is using for this particular purpose. And also in this particular case when we are making it on and off, so what happened? So, if I am having some kind of vibrations which is not continuous, so simple I can control that one and I can generate the electricity continuously. Now, what are the advantages? Works at all types of weather conditions, easy in construction and safer to use high efficiency at high frequency easy to scale up. Of course, there are certain disadvantages strength of the permanent magnet will decrease with respect to time yes of course, because it is the inherent property. So, after certain time the magnetic property can degrade cost increase with increase in strength of the magnet due to hysteresis loss in the core heat will be evolved due to this heat efficiency to the permanent magnet will decrease 
low output for the small devices. So, that means basically we need a higher or maybe that powerful magnet to generate the more electricity. Now, we have come to the last part or maybe the last slide of this particular lecture. So, basically the thermoelectric power generator is a device that converts the heat energy into electrical energy based on the principle of the Seebeck effect. Seebeck effect is used in electricity generation and Peltier effect is used in cooling applications. The performance of thermoelectric device depends on figure of merit. This is the main parameter over there of the material takes can be divided into two categories including rigid and flexible takes. Electromagnetic methods include linear generators and rotary generators. Copper wire or coils are widely reported as induction coil used in electromagnetic micro generator. Sometimes we are using the gold wire also. Thank you.